Hello, good to see you all. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Can y'all see that? Yes, it looks fine. Great. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so welcome to the monthly CNCSCI working group. Um, switched from the twice monthly to monthly right now, 8 a.m. Pacific. Same Zoom and all of that. There's the the notes are available um, here. This is this one right here. If anyone wants to add themselves uh, to the who's here on the attendees as well as agenda, um, feel free to do that for this or next month. So right now it looks like we have um, cross cloud CI. So I'll give an update on that and then. Uh, Ed, I think you're going to speak about some of the things on the packet side. So we have you on there. Yes. Awesome. Okay, cool. So on Cross Cloud CI. So on this project, we were at KubeCon, uh, Copenhagen, gave two talks, had a lot of interactions. Uh, the intro was uh, going over the cross Cloud CI project and how it worked. Um, we've done that before. All of those talks are on YouTube, if you want to check that out. Uh, we also gave a deep dive on the cross cloud provisioning uh, portion, so the one component out of all the different components in the project and how provisioning is currently working for Kubernetes across multiple clouds and the testing and stuff that happened. Uh, both talks, we got quite a bit of feedback, which was uh, one of the main goals so that we could see where do we want to go, what's going to benefit the community <clears throat> on that. And I met up with quite a few folks, individuals, as well as like conformance group and other things. So quick recap um, goals, original goals on this project. So um, CNCF growing, um, if we've, we've gone through this quite a bit, um, lots of new uh, clouds added, new projects, and how do we test, and how do they all work together? Well, the original goals on the project we had building the actual CI platform that could test uh, Kubernetes and deploy it to multiple clouds, uh, deploy the projects onto Kubernetes and test how they're going to all work together. And that was broken into multiple components, including the cross cloud, the multi cloud provisioner, the cross project portion, and the being able to have the E2E -E test split out, separated whether they were included as the project was deployed or deployed as other containers. So that was kind of phase one. And that's gone through a few iterations at this point and all the components can be used independently. And then the phase two was, um, which is part of the original goal was a dashboard and how was the, the data and status gonna be pulled from all those places and displayed. And that goal has also been met as far as the current uh, view, which is um, a multi-view showing the Kubernetes, the, kind of the infrastructure testing, as well as the project view. And then um, a original kind of goal that was um, the idea there was the CI system as far as builds and stuff would be optional and we could use external CI systems. When we added ONAP, um, we met that goal rather than just as an idea, but actually being able to integrate and pull those. And some of those are actually still being um, 
we're using that now and they're actually being pulled in by the ONAP team. They're doing some stuff with OPNFV and stuff. So we've been giving them feedback about how we did that and integrated with an external system. So some of the projects that we have right now, Prometheus, FluentD, Cordina, SlinkerD on the page, ONAP, what I was just mentioning, OpenStack, Azure, IBM Cloud Packet, of course. And here's the current view, what we're saying. So Kubernetes and, and then all the projects. So builds first, then provisioning of Kubernetes. And then once the builds for all of the other projects finish, then they're deployed. So GitLab, Terraform, Cloud Init, um, Kube Test right now for Kubernetes and Helm, and then running whatever the project end end test. <clears throat> Had a lot of talk at Kubecon about Terraform and and also a little bit about Cloud Init. It all made sense once that was gone in, but what's used there? and where that would tie in with um, current deployments from the cluster lifecycle team. <clears throat> the dashboard, uh, folks, there's less, I guess, contention on it, more desire to have similar things for like test grid, what could we show if we're gonna have some other view. So technology-wise, uh, the status repository, everybody's interested in that. Um, this may end up being something separate or useful outside of what we've done. Um, we've done a little bit of updates as far as just keeping up with current projects and stuff, and then um, updates on the external CI integration. I was mentioning that before, we're giving some of that info for some other projects. So uh, our main goal right now is gathering info for moving forward. What do we want to do community-wise? So working with the testing SIGs, uh, conformist working group, talking with specific um, providers and other things. <clears throat> We've had some feedback as far as the CNCF projects helping more with the end-to-end -end test and how do we display those and interoperability, those sort of things. Additional Kubernetes versions so probably split off and shouldn't have or a desire to show a difference between projects and Kubernetes status and the, I guess, different community goals on those. And then we've continued to hear um, eventual switch from using KubeTest to Sonoboy, um, kind of across the board as we're going forward, not stop everything switch, but as, um, as you're moving forward, then do that. And then we've been working with the cluster lifecycle and looking at how we could use Kubeadm um, as part of the actual cluster bring up for Kubernetes, uh, at least past the resource provisioning phase. So looking into that and trying to work with that team. So those are some of the goals as far as the community side, as far as the project um, internal side. So API for history build deployments seems to still be desired, and that could tie in with the, the status repository piece, which could be potentially useful outside of even the dashboard, but providing access like the test, uh, test grid as far as the data. Um, there was a desire talking with the SIG and Aaron and some other folks about providing access to the test grid data and the cross cloud CI and potentially some other projects on how to combine all of that and allow people to query and how you'd filter and see how things worked with different flags. So those are some potential and then on the dashboard based on feedback and potentially splitting things out, of course, saying project deployment, this sort of things. So we're trying, we're still gathering feedback, talking with folks. Um, what, what should we actually be testing? Where's the biggest needs between the different groups that are potentially missing or hurting, or how can we help there? What, what should we be testing and showing? And then integrations between um, the different projects, um, 
what would be most useful to support those. And then the independent testing of Kubernetes uh, container service providers. That was something talked about um, at KubeCon and before. Not sure exactly where that's going. We want to try to track and work with um, conformance group and figure out some of these things. So uh, network service mesh is something um, they're asking about cross cloud. Um, some of the other groups are asking like a BNFV for the community. They're asking about how um, some of these things could be used, like the own app integration. We've passed over some of that info, how we did it. And I think a lot of the different components, what we've come, come up with are the ideas different pieces are desired in different groups. So that's been really nice to see uh, people coming in and saying, how did you do these different parts? So um, from the standpoint of taking a lot of ideas and showing here's how it could work together, I think that's really great. And we're trying to gather enough feedback to see what would be the best direction to go next. And love to hear more feedback. Um, if you want to watch any of those like the intro video again they're go back up here those are there the deep dive and love to hear feedback from anyone whether on the list or if you would like to dig into anything specific let us know some events um, coming up that were particularly interested. And with that, I will pass it over to Ed, if you're ready, Ed. Would you like to share screen or? I'm fine. You want me to... Yeah, I'm fine with you just advancing slides. There's not a lot of slides okay. here. I can just talk through them. No problem. So, Sounds good. So I'm Ed Vilmetti. I'm at Packet. Um, we provide uh, infrastructure for the bare metal testing uh, on the CNCF CI. Um, uh, go ahead to the next slide, because I think that's where I got. So um, just general status uh, from our perspective. Um, generally, the status reports have been green for the packet column, which uh, has been great. Um, Every once in a while, they're not green, and uh, we take a close look at uh, every morning at uh, status of things and make sure that there's nothing unexpected that happened overnight. Um, one of the things that we have run into in the past has been capacity issues where the CI infrastructure uh, requests resources at the exact same time that some other project scoops up all the resources in a data center. Um, what it's pointed us to is a need at our API to have some flexibility about the request such that someone might be able to say, I need eight machines uh, in any, all in any of some data center, but I don't care which. And so we're exploring some API flexibility that would reduce the capacity uh, related issues. Of course, we're always building out capacity, but um, since uh, the cross cloud is using non-dedicated resources, there's always the risk uh, that you're going to run into, into that. Um, I will open up the question, um, if the uh, demand is suitable, uh, Packet does have a reserved hardware uh, capacity where we could set aside some number of machines dedicated for the task. Uh, it would change the test a little bit. It would uh, no longer focus on capacity at packet, but more solely on the Kubernetes issues. I don't have a really good idea of how many machines you need. And since I know you're only using them for uh, some small number of hours per day, um, it's not the most efficient, but it might be the most effective. So I'll leave that as an open question to discuss if we, uh, if we run into any other issues that look like they're difficult to address. Next slide. Um, the other issue that I wanna 
uh, touch on uh, what has been on the uh, coming soon or under consideration list is uh, CrossCloud CI on ARM. Um, one of the things that I do at Packet is run the Works on ARM project, which is funded by ARM and has some equipment uh, dedicated for the task of ports and CI and CD for ARM 64 based server software. Um, so I thought I'd run through a quick list of the status of if we were to start an ARM on an ARM on bare metal CI, what would our expectations be day one? Um, and look at some of the key components that we would have to get running even for the system to start to try to work. Um, the first issue uh, is Helm and Tiller. So the Helm project provides an ARM64 binary of Helm, but for reasons that escape me, um, does not provide an ARM64 version of Tiller in their official uh, binary release. There are community builds of this, but since we're looking at doing a, a test of the, of the code rather than test of someone's interpretation of the code, um, I think this is probably a, a first out of the gate uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure that would be necessary before the testing would commence. Um, the, just less of a first issue, but but uh, a known issue just in terms of conformance testing. Um, also the Sonobui um, code base um, has not been uh, released in an ARM format, uh, our ready to go format. I don't know degree of difficulty on that. At least someone thought that it wasn't gonna be that hard because a lot of the components were already ready, but there's, there's non-trivial work necessary there to do the test things. Um, as to components, um, the core of Kubernetes looks good and we have a community response uh, of people using it in all sorts of cluster environments. Uh, both Prometheus and Core DNS have been ported and provide ARM64 binaries. Um, FluentD and Linkerd are not currently ported. Um, I don't have a degree of difficulty on both of those. I believe that Linkerd may be a dependency issue uh, fluency may be more complicated. Um, as to ONAP, a uh, port is underway, um, sponsored by some folks at ARM. Um, there are some dependencies on Rancher inside ONAP, as I understand it, as I read their commentary on it, um, and that may uh, make an ONAP port uh, a longer process rather than a short one. Um, what I don't have is a list of everything that needs to work for this all to work on ARM. Um, if there are other components that I need to be aware of uh, that, we, that would be prerequisites for even starting a CI system, um, that's uh, on my mind. And, you know, like the, what is the complete dependency graph for the entire CNCF CI uh, is, is not a small question. Um, I'm sure we will discover things as we start them. Uh, but I wanted to give a sense for where where I thought first focus work would be. And that would be, uh, if I had to pick one thing out of this whole list, it would be the Helm and Tiller question. So, and with that, um, I will take any questions. Hearing no one, um, let's go on. As far as, so not a question, but as far as a comment on uh, testing from the CrossCloud CI project itself, uh, I don't think that running the CrossCloud CI software, um, the, the entire stack is required if we have the ability to target resources. So. If we bring up resources to run the projects, Kubernetes and that sort of thing on, then you can deploy to ARM and not have um, all of it working. So that's a possibility to kind of, I guess, bootstrap part of it. And then, of course, if, if we're running the entire thing, then we'd want to look at that. Um, 
the Erlang and, yeah. and those parts would probably be the only other thing. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry to interrupt, um, Taylor. I just wanted to mention, Ed, this is Dan Kahn, that I, how much would you appreciate Packet's contributions here? And um, just a, in a separate front, I have a, a totally separate project that I'm looking to spin up um, r related to the, the VNF work that, that Taylor and his team are now working on. Um, but that we're we're hope, aiming to use some uh, packet hardware, both um, x86 and ARM, and to show um, sort of why um, automated provisioning of a lot of hardware without needing to use OpenStack. So it it um, circles back to that classic blog post you guys have of uh, how we failed at OpenStack. Oh, we're very good at failing in OpenStack. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, great. Man. So I'll, I'll be in touch if we need anything, but you know, right now, just the, the bare metal has been great. Good. Yeah. I know that we have a couple of projects interested in NFE and VNF and, uh, bare access to the bare hardware, which seems to be helpful for those sorts of tasks. That's all. Thanks. Awesome. So any other questions or comments? I'd love to get some of the other, I guess, groups and folks who are doing um, CI that could be interest, um, useful for various CNCF projects, um, how we could get them more involved. We're trying to reach out and gather ideas ourselves, both for the cross-cloud project, um, as well as the CNF, VNF, like what's happening in different groups, how are people doing stuff. Um, getting other folks to get on here would be great. Um, right now, how to connect, here's the mailing list. ideas on who may be interested or have projects that would be useful um, for everyone else. Love to have them join. This is Ed. Um, mm -hmm. One project that I've been working with uh, that is doing uh, cross architecture CI that might have an interest in just sharing experiences at some point is the adopt open JK project um, I will make a point to share this contact information with them um, just to see if they want to uh, have someone pop in and uh, understand the the nature of what you're doing because it's conceptually very sim similar to what they're doing which is building a complex system across a lot of architectures and platforms. Um, and I'm sure there's uh, either um, insights from one to the other or um, perhaps shared experience that might be useful. Absolutely, sounds great. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining and we will see you next month, if not earlier, another on another meeting. Have a good one. Thank you all.